Did the neutered little Twitter Nazis who banned vaccine inventor and bona fide vaccine expert Robert W. Malone just set off the mother of all backfires? Well, it certainly looks that way. Now that they've drawn so much public interest to the man that they've apparently broken the Google algorithm for censoring stories about him. Okay, so the whole thing started like this. Shortly after Malone was banned on Twitter, he did a long interview with podcaster Joe Rogan, arguing that the disinformation and repressed information on bat stew vaccines was something resembling mass psychosis. I'll put a link in the description box to a pirated copy of that episode of Joe Rogan's podcast. So, similar to probably January 6th or stolen elections or, well, probably anything Trump-related, the term mass psychosis and related ones created widely diverging results between Google and its biggest rival, the more objective DuckDuckGo search engine. We'll dive into the details right after this quick commercial break to pay some bills. Do you have a personal butcher? I certainly don't. Well, until now. I introduce to you The Personal Butcher. They offer you the highest quality meats by partnering with best-in-class farms located in the United States. Okay, so here's how it works. They'll send you a custom box every four weeks and you can pause or cancel at any time or just change the frequency of deliveries. The Personal Butcher believes that quality meat shouldn't be a hassle to get your hands on. They want every home in America to have access to the best quality and with the same convenience as getting the mail from your mailbox. So let's talk quality. They offer the best quality products raised here in the United States. Grass-fed beef, free-range chicken, anabolic free pork. Their meat is 100% raised, processed, packed, and shipped in the United States. It's processed from family farms in Idaho, Montana, and Iowa. It's then packaged and shipped out of their Chicago land area distribution center. So if you're interested in feeding yourself and your family from a high quality source you can trust while at the same time supporting this channel, give the personal butcher a try by hitting that link in the description box. Okay, so this ought to be kind of embarrassing for Google and Twitter and the rest of the tech barons trying to stomp the doctor and the term mass psychosis out from any internet media presence based on his inconvenient ideas about the risks of the mRNA vaccine. Although Malone is a giant in his field and hard to discredit the way they can do with the sordid pipsqueaks out there, somehow they think they need to silence this man. On Google, just like with the Donald and, I don't know, Matt Gates, Roger Stone, Steve Bannon, the list goes on and on, they've tried to paint him as a nut, a conspiracy theorist, a vaccine skeptic, a Nazi, based on the search results they tried to throw up. But the truth got out there anyways and their manipulated algorithm has been fully exposed once again, discrediting them, and in any case, not working. All they managed to really do was promote him bigger than ever, generating so much public interest in his ideas and warnings that they busted the Google algorithms. You know, Twitter's little demented children of the DNC who started all this ought to really consider going into some public relations courses one wonders what the conversation must be like right now between Twitter and the Google Barons. What's more, the idiots created huge numbers of Malone-related terms on Twitter itself, with people passing around thousands of shares of Malone clips with hashtags under Malone, Joe Rogan, Mass Psychosis, and related words. Literally hundreds of valuable little clips are easily spotted through these hashtags on Twitter. It's really significant because Malone has big tech, big politics, and big pharma's number, and they've got a target painted on his back in response. Malone beautifully pointed out that many of the more insane and counterproductive public health measures going around have been brought on by conflicts of interest and a revolving door between medical researchers, big pharma, and of course, public health officials. Profit motives are in full force. Malone told Rogan all about it. For instance, pointing out that Routers does a lot of fact-checking for Twitter. And they have a top executive sitting on the Pfizer board. Conflict anyone? You see, Malone's revelations are a threat to a lot of rich folks right there. But he hasn't stopped. As the writer of an otherwise useless Atlantic hit piece wrote about Malone, correctly noting, 
Quote, I've listened to hours of Malone's interviews and read through the many pages of documents he's posted. He is a knowledgeable scientist with a knack for lucid explanation. Unquote. Precisely, that explains some of his popularity, his preference for truth over easily gained popularity through anti-science hype, explains the rest. The Atlantic, owned and reportedly directed editorially by Apple Fortune heiress Lauren Powell Jobs, launched the first hit piece on Malone back in August. The article tried to claim that Malone was an insignificant, unimportant guy who exaggerated his accomplishments and didn't play well with others. It was badly sourced and supported only by the statements of jealous rivals whose conflicts of interest magically went unmentioned in the piece, of course. There was a little warning that he'd screwed up his Nobel Prize for medicine for his work in the piece, which contradicts the other claims in the piece about him being unimportant and inclined to inflate his resume. The problem is that Nobel Prize committees don't normally bother with such characters, well, except in the literature and peace categories, but not so much in science, they're pretty hardcore. Malone noted a few times on Rogan's show that the reporter kept asking him again and again and again who was paying him, whose interest is he acting on behalf of. And to me, that sounds like a question from his betters, you know, the higher ups at the Atlantic. Someone was directing their idiot reporter to bring back the answer to the question in a broader bid to discredit Malone. The Atlantic's claim that Malone didn't get along with others was ridiculous too. Malone is sharp and certain in his views, because he knows what the hell he's talking about when it comes to this topic. The Atlantic's charge is ridiculous because it's so damn weak and subjective in content. The topic is the inventor of the mRNA vaccine, and all they can come up with is that he does not play well with others. Seriously? Is that the best you can do? My goodness. So yeah, the transparent, on-purpose ignorance that was revealed with that particular claim about him not being nice enough to other researchers, so nobody should pay attention to his scientific discoveries, stuck out as particularly stupid. Apparently, the writer, a poor little fella named Tom Bartlett, believed that Malone needs to be more like him and just go along to get along. It doesn't really work that way if you want to break new ground on something, idiot. You know that very same mentality of go along to get along, you know, kind of a communistic mentality. It's why China is constantly stealing everything we invent. Malone's expansive interview with Rogan is chock full of information about the origins of the bat stew, the manipulations and maneuverings of public health decisions, the story of how India broke the bat stew death cycle, and a whole lot of other things that discredit entirely the bat stew industrial complex. It really is heartening to see this kind of information draw so much public interest. It needs to draw a lot more. So take the time, hit the link in the description box, and watch the full interview and inform people. Share the content. This bat stew edifice is crumbling, and it's a beautiful thing, folks. And a nice little cherry on top was that Malone has dealt Google a blow, one that overwhelmed it at long last and perhaps the first of many to come. Well, that's about it for that one. I'm not going to run any clips with sound because whoever's running the content over there on Joe Rogan's podcast runs a pretty tight ship, meaning they hand out copyright strikes, like candy on Halloween. And those copyright claims sure add up and they affect monetization should this channel ever get to the point where it qualifies. Anyways, once again, link in the description to the full interview. Pirated source could be gone by the time I post this video. I don't know, but it's worth a shot, right? Most of this came by way of the American Thinker. If you liked it, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave a comment down below. There's a PayPal link in the description box, so please put a dollar in the bucket on the way out the door. I'd like to thank everyone for all your donations. They're much needed and much appreciated. Now, with all that being said, We'll see you next time. Come on, move. Move. Easy, easy.